Okay, hello everybody. This is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, today, uh, the uh, I guess the title for the show will be uh, Words and Terms, uh, Let's Get It Right. Um, uh, I'll explain a little bit more about uh, you know what we're trying to accomplish today. Uh, first, I want to ask uh, Brother Eric just to say hi and introduce himself. Hello, viewers, uh, and hello, uh, Brother uh, Luke. I wish uh, all my lawyers could be present today uh, for this very important meeting. Okay, back to you. All right, then. Um, the, uh, there are, I found that there are a lot of uh, terms and terminology and words that uh, not only that we, we find some of them in the scriptures and some of them uh, are not in the scriptures at all, but they're man-made terms that uh, people use associating to salvation and Christianity. So uh, I, I think that we should uh, understand what the words mean and, and, and uh, these terms, do, do the terms that are commonly used, do they really apply correctly towards uh, the, the true message of salvation? So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, I put together a list of a few words and a few terms. And as we go through this, uh, we may think of some more that we'll add to the list. If you are, I'm going to try to figure out how to uh, look at my Google Plus page here and see if anybody poses a question on there and wants to uh, uh, start, uh, you know, in, ask us to define another word or a term. Uh, I'm not sure if I know how to access that right. I think I'm looking at the right thing, but I don't know. I'm still learning how to use all this technology here. But uh, let's start off, just take a minute here to uh, just praise Jesus because, uh, I mean, is there anything better that we can do in life than just praise our great Savior God, Jesus Christ? Uh, no matter what we study in the Bible, uh, no matter what we do in our ministries, um, the, the most joyful thing and the most, the most uh, needed thing is to give all the glory to Jesus Christ. And that's one of the big mistakes people make in salvation is that uh, they think salvation is determined by their own efforts. And, and, and not only is that false, but in a, in, if they do believe that, they're actually attempting to steal the glory from Jesus. who he, He's the one that did everything for our salvation. We, we do nothing except accept him as our Savior. And, and, uh, and then uh, so that way he gets all the glory. And so let's just always know who this wonderful Savior is and, and how great he is and how worthy he is of our love and our praise and adoration. So, brother, I'll let you comment on that before we go into these words. Agreement with you on that. Um, it's uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, all right, I'm not sure your uh, audio or video is working correctly. Uh, it seemed like you froze up. Let me give you a chance to talk again as a test. Just uh, start talking for a moment, and let me see if your audio or video is working. Okay. Uh, is there a problem with my video feed? Uh, this is uh, new okay. To me. I, I can okay. see you and hear you now. Your 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 video video clarity is not what it usually is. Uh, so it's not as it's okay, but it's not as as really good as it, uh, I would like it. But I can hear you. All right, um, let's go on to this um, topic then. The first thing that I want to correct is many times people um, 
I've even had some uh, some believers that I, I I believe they're saved, and I believe that they uh, they understand salvation. But just a few days ago, one of the believers here on YouTube was talking to me, and we we're we we're talking about our testimonies, and and he used the terminology on such and such a date he gave his life to Christ, and uh, I, I would not use that. Uh, term to um, to associate with the day I got saved because we do not get saved because we give our life to Christ we get saved because Christ gave his life for us and again this is uh, when a person bases their salvation on the premise that it's, uh, it's uh, based on something that they do like giving your life then um, they're, they're stealing glory from Jesus, who gave his life for us. But it's very, very common that, that people will use that, that term. Uh, uh, do you, will you give your life to Christ to get saved? Or I remember back 20 years ago when I gave my life to Christ. And uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not the way we get saved. And it's a term that we should not be using regarding salvation. Now, uh, as far as um, becoming a minister and a disciple of Jesus after we get saved, if a person wants to say, well, after I put my faith in Jesus and understood that he gave his life for me to pay for my sins, and then uh, uh, after that point, I wanted to give my life to Christ. Like, I wanted to give my life to him in service as much as I could. Then that would be an appropriate way of, of expressing that sentiment. Okay, uh, brother, uh, I'd like your opinion on that. Uh, I'm in 100% agreement with you, Brother Luke, uh, because we adhere uh, strictly to scriptures, and it's very important uh, when we're getting the gospel message out to get the exact message that God intended us to get out and not to change it, because error will try to creep in uh, undetected. And uh, you got to catch it right quick and stop it. Okay, back to you. Yeah, uh, and in, in one way, it, it, people might think, well, you're, you're kind of nitpicking, Brother Luke. I mean, you're, you're being a little bit too, uh, you know, straining gnats. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's not that big of a deal. But first of all, it is a big deal if a person misunderstands salvation and thinks that's how you receive salvation. You give your life to Christ, and then he gives you salvation. It's some kind of a bargain, some kind of an exchange where uh, you uh, you make some kind of a, a commitment or promise to serve him and give your life over to him, and then he saves you. And that's not what salvation is based upon. Salvation is based upon simply your faith in Jesus to be your savior. And so it is important that uh, it could be an indicator that someone never did understand salvation and therefore maybe they never did get saved. And it could just be an innocent mistake that a person's using that they got saved, uh, they understand salvation. It's just they're being a little bit um, careless in using that term. I'll go on to the next one. I'll give you another chance to comment on that if you uh, I agree with you, Brother Luke, because uh, uh, if we start uh, saying stuff that ain't true, that ain't in the Bible, and uh, we start teaching it to others, uh, we'll get in big trouble uh, if we go against Scripture in that way. It's very important to know uh, what you're doing, how to handle Scriptures. Okay, back to you. All right, uh, the, the next term I hear uh, quite often is someone says that uh, back in 1970, I, I surrendered my life to Jesus. Or they might say, in, in telling you how to get saved, they, they might tell you, will you surrender your life to Jesus and get saved? And again, it's the same kind of a thing where uh, that's not how people get saved by surrendering their lives over to Jesus uh, for salvation. Uh, 
salvation. Uh, I mean, we talk about it every single video I have. Really, I talk about salvation and the, what the, the, the true method of salvation is. The method is Jesus did it all. He paid for our sins. He raised himself from the dead he, to prove that we, we can put our faith in him and be confident. And, and, and all we do is put our faith in him. And he gives us eternal life as a free gift, and it's irrevocable. We could never lose it, and that's that's how it works. Uh, so if you tr if you're saying that a person has to surrender their life over to Jesus to get saved, then it's it's misrepresenting what uh, the, the 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 means of salvation really is. Salvation is a free gift. It's not a bargain or a deal. Or, um, so, um, yeah. Submit is another way of looking at submit to Jesus, uh, surrender your life, submit uh, to Jesus. Uh, now, I will say that there is a correct way of using this term and, and, and it attract uh, the way to apply it to salvation. And that I would say that if a person believes that they could um, earn salvation through their own effort, and they, they don't understand that the standard they've got to meet is perfection. But they think that uh, they, they, they have what, what I would call easy legalism. In other words, they think that as far as following the laws and doing the right thing, that they're capable of doing it. And if they do well enough, that God will, God will accept them. Well, that's all the religions of the world are based upon that. But as my shirt says here, Christianity is not a religion. A re religion is simply a system of things that we must do in order to satisfy God so we can go to heaven. All religions are based on that premise. But Christianity is a relationship with Jesus where you're trusting him as your uh, Savior God. Uh, but if a person thinks that uh, uh, they can somehow earn salvation through personal merit, they don't understand how strict the standard is. The standard is perfection. Now, once, uh, if a person, if I'm talking to a person like that, and they, I'm explaining to them, well, look, do you realize that you, in order to go to heaven on personal merit, you'd have to be perfect. You'd have to have never sinned once your entire life. Now, already for you, it's too late. Because we've all sinned. I mean, it doesn't take us long from the time we're like, you know, two, three years old, we start being defiant and, and lying and, and, and uh, you know, being, uh, it's just in our nature. And for, for our nature to come out and act out and be sinful is just a natural thing for all of us. So, it, it, you know, if you're talking to someone about sin and salvation, then we know that it's already too late for them to get to heaven through perfection because they've already failed. Now, some people might think that, well, I'll repent of that. I'll apologize to God for that and forget, and he'll forgive me. And then from here on out, I won't sin anymore. Well, uh, that's impossible too. Uh, so if a person needs to come to the conclusion that getting to heaven through personal merit is impossible, and if they understand that, once they finally come to that conclusion, they can surrender in this sense, saying, I give up. I finally realize that all my efforts are like filthy rags in the sight of God. It's hopeless. I surrender. Now, that's not surrendering your life over in service to God. That's surrendering in the sense that you say, it's futile. My efforts, all my efforts are, are completely hopeless. I cannot do it. I need an intervention from God. Yeah. And, 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 and that's what God did. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to intervene on our behalf, die for our sins, and offer us eternal life as a free gift. So in that sense, I can see, okay, surrender and admit that you're hopeless. But the way people are using surrender your life for salvation is a works-based concept where you've got to surrender your will over to God and completely follow and submit your will over to, to God and serve him and, and, and make a deal like that. And that is not biblical Christianity.
Christianity. And if that's what you're basing your salvation on, then uh, you're going to fail and you will end up in hell instead. Okay, brother, uh, before we go on to the next point, uh, is there uh, anything you want to add to that? Uh, that's great, Brother Luke. I love how you uh, took that surrender your life and you showed how it would truly apply to salvation. Uh, oh, keep up the good work. Okay. All right, brother. Uh, and now the next term is uh, follower of Jesus. Uh, now, I... I am attempting to be a follower of Jesus, a disciple, uh, a servant, a minister. In fact, every person, when they do get born again through faith alone in Christ alone, and uh, th that, that very moment, their ministry begins. God does have a ministry in mind for each one of us and he gives each one of us particular spiritual gifts now not everybody seeks and, and, and discovers what their gifts are and then not everybody then will exercise and apply those gifts in service we all should do that god wants us to that's that's his intention uh but uh if we think that um, um being a follower of Jesus or a disciple of Jesus or a servant of, of, of Jesus is the means by which we get saved. Then again, you're putting your faith in your own ability to perform instead of uh, the fact that Jesus already performed on our behalf. He lived a sinless, perfect life. He died on a cross and paid for our sins. He did it all. On the cross, as he died, he said, it is finished except the fact that it's finished and there's nothing left for you to do except trust him. Okay, brother. That's great, brother Luke. Uh, I just thought of something. I was talking to Jay Nor earlier today and I quoted that verse, uh, obey the gospel. And he took it the wrong way and he thought I was uh, recommending some sort of a works uh, salvation. But there is a verse in Thessalonians that uh, uh, mentions uh, uh, the reward for them that disobey the gospel. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Yeah, okay. Who, who was that? Did you mention someone's name? Uh, yes, Brother Luke. I'm going to be mentioning a lot, a lot of names, and uh, I'm going to be handing out it to uh, all sorts of different folks. Okay, uh, and this was Jake Moore, and he seems to be a pretty good kid, though. I, I, I still didn't get his name. Let's say it again. Uh, Jay Nor. Oh. Jay Nor. Okay, I don't know Jay Nor. I guess, huh? He's uh, uh, but, Wayne Brooks, buddy. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, well, I don't know him, but. Uh, Obeying the gospel, the way you uh, use the term, of course, it, that term is in the scriptures, and it's just, it's just uh, basically what we're asking everybody to do right now is that, that um, don't disobey the gospel by trying to get saved through your own effort. Instead, surrender, admit you're, you're defeated and you can't do it, and then put your faith in Jesus. That's obeying the gospel. That's that's saying, I'm going to believe in Jesus instead of thinking that I can do it on my own. So that's really the proper way of, uh, of uh, that use of that verse. Uh, let me go on to the next point here, and it is uh, ask Jesus into your heart. Uh, now, I... Some people say that, well, that, that's not in the Bible. But it is in the Bible in a sense. And there, there's a, a verse, I'm not sure I'm going to quote it exactly right. Maybe you know it. It says, uh, if we uh, confess with our mouth uh, the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, we will be saved. So there is a term there that says, believe in your heart. 
And to me, in your heart, it's not talking about like an, your organ that pumps blood. It's talking about in your innermost sentiments, your feelings, your mind, your conviction. Uh, there's also the use of the word heart. I recall that when Philip was witnessing to the Ethiopian eunuch, and the the uh, he was reading the eunuch was reading the uh, Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. And he asked Philip about it. He didn't understand it. And Philip says, well, this is about Jesus. This is a prophecy about Jesus. And he told him all about Jesus and the, uh, the, the salvation message. And, and the, the, the Ethiopian eunuch believed. and He got saved. And then the eunuch said, uh, now, uh, now is it okay? Can I get baptized? And uh, Philip said, if you believe with your whole heart, then you can be baptized. Uh, so that's another example that comes to my mind about the I, the concept of your heart. And to me, that the use of the word heart just means that it's, it's heartfelt conviction. It's a sincere, honest belief. Uh, so uh, that's why uh, the idea of being water baptized after you believed, uh, Philip said, yeah, oh, you can do it. Now, he didn't command him to do it. There's, there's two factions of people that I find in serious error about water baptism. On one side, you have the hyper-dispensationalists. Uh, I have a long playlist about that called Paul Only Isn't Debunked. There's many, many errors in their teaching. But one of their errors is teaching that you must remain dry. Don't get wet. Water baptism is forbidden. Because if you get water baptized, it's a sign that you are putting your faith in a work, the work of water baptism. Uh, whereas, so they're forbidding water baptism. And water baptism is not forbidden. It's, it, it's actually an ordinance, and we're, we're told we should get water baptized after we get saved. But, but you're not going to go to hell if you refuse to get water baptized. You know, if you put your faith in Jesus, you're saved. The, the real value in the water baptism is, is the, it's an opportunity for someone who may not want to get on a video like this or stand on a street corner the way I've done and, and, and boldly out there preach the gospel. But this person at least has an opportunity to go in front of their friends and their family and say, I'm not ashamed. I'm, I'm, I've become a Christian and I want my family and friends to know it. And I'm going to be uh, submerged in this water. And it's a, it's a public statement of me believing in the death burial and resurrection of jesus that's the submerging and the coming out again it's a picture of the death burial and resurrection so uh, the the hyper dispensationalists really err saying don't get water baptized you don't stay dry and then the the other faction that goes the opposite extreme that the some of the pentecostals uh, th that they believe in baptismal regeneration you can believe in Jesus and believe in the gospel and, and to do everything I'm saying that you, what you need to do. And yet you're not saved until you get wet. You must get wet. You must get submerged or you're not saved. That's what they believe. And that's wrong too. Uh, the, uh, the Ethiopian unit was saved before he got wet. But he was, he was able to get water baptized afterwards because he was already saved. That's exactly what Philip says. If you believe in your whole heart, he says, is it okay if I get water baptized? Now? He said, yeah, if you believe in your whole heart, then you can. So, but my point is the concept of believe in your, in your heart, inviting Jesus into your heart, I think is what we're, we're talking about here. Um, ask Jesus into your heart. Well, uh, to me, these are the correct ways of, of, uh, under, of thinking in terms of our heart and the heartfelt and Jesus. And the Bible also says that, that uh, uh, Jesus is in us and we are in him. He indwells us through his Holy Spirit. So we know that, that Jesus is in us uh, as the Holy Spirit. I shouldn't say as the Holy Spirit. They're two separate persons, but... But the, the Holy Spirit is Jesus' spirit. And so we are indwelled with Jesus' spirit. And so as far as someone thinking that, well, Jesus comes into you, yeah, okay. But don't think that the way you get saved is you don't understand that, that salvation has nothing to do with personal merit. 
You don't understand that salvation is based upon, uh, you know, your, your faith in Jesus and what he's done for you and his promises of eternal life. You, if you don't understand all that and you just simply think, oh, I invite Jesus into my heart. That, does, that doesn't accomplish anything. He's not going to come into your heart. He's not going to indwell you until you understand that you need to rely on him instead of trying to get to heaven on your own. Okay, brother, I'll ask you to make a comment on that if you want before I move to the next point. Okay, brother Luke, uh, I agree with you. Uh, if it's not in scripture, uh, we certainly shouldn't be uh, uh, commanding it. Uh, the truth is, uh, God commands all men to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when they do that, they will be putting their faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. All right, I'm going to... I'm going to look here and see on my Google Plus page if there's any kind of activity there. I don't know. I might not even be looking at the right place. Let me look up here and see if someone's commented. Terminology. Okay. Let me see. No, nobody's posed to put. Um, if, if you're watching now and you have another term, or a particular word that you want us to discuss, if it, you know how it applies to salvation, then go ahead and, and post it, and I'll try to uh, find it and respond to it. But the next one we'll go into is uh, make Jesus your Lord. Uh, there's a uh, there, the, I'd, I'd say the vast majority of Christendom um, are guilty of, of, um, of adding, and this is a requirement, that you've got to have Jesus your Lord, you've got to follow him, you've got to serve him, you've got to submit to him. All these things are fall under this idea of make Jesus your Lord. And Christendom, let me see, I think there's... Uh, Got a note here. How many are there? There's uh, 2.2 billion people in the world that identify themselves as a Christian of some kind. Out of those, there's 1.2 billion that are in the Roman Catholic uh, cult. And th these people are. Um, uh, I'll welcome uh, Brother Stephen here just finish, as soon as I ma finish making this point here. Uh, Mute your, uh, mute your microphone, Brother Stephen, until until uh, we're ready to talk. Brother Stephen? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so you've got 2.2 billion people who call themselves Christians of some kind. 1.2 billion are in the Roman Catholic cult, and these people, uh, it would be like maybe one out of a million that's a really a Christian because almost all of them are putting their faith in their own ability to be religious and to please God through their own performance. So um, that's a form of what we call lordship salvation, uh, works salvation. And then out of the remain remainder, uh, there's another um, one billion people who uh, think of themselves as a Christian of some kind. And, and I'd say the vast majority of those also are in error, thinking that salvation has something to do with their performance, that they've either got to do something, in or, uh, perform in some way in order to get saved, or perform in some way to stay saved, or perform by doing, when I say perform, I'm talking about uh, reform your life, uh, stop sinning, start doing religious works, and, and all that's necessary to at least prove that you truly are saved. So I'd say out of the vast majority of the, the other billion professing Christians, uh, that the vast majority of those are, are in error on that point. They don't understand the concept that salvation is a free gift, and it's not based on personal merit. So when when it says uh, this term is used that you must make Jesus your Lord, uh, then um, uh, I would say that 
if someone tells you that's how you, you get saved, well, are you ready to make Jesus your Lord? That's not how you get saved. Now, uh, does that mean that I'm against the Lordship of Jesus? That I'm against Jesus being my Lord? Or I would tell people, other people, no, don't, don't let Jesus be your Lord. That, no, that would be Lordship salvation. No. What, what the scriptures tell us is that salvation is completely free, no strings attached. It's not based on anything we do. It's based on what Jesus has done for us and his promises for us. And so uh, that's the thing that a person needs to understand. Now, the lordship of Jesus is true whether someone is a Christian or a Muslim, or a Jew, or an atheist. Jesus is Lord of all, no matter if someone agrees with that or not. Now, as far as some Jesus being Lord in terms of in charge of my life, once I put my faith in Jesus correctly, I'm putting my faith completely in him and not relying on my own performance, the Holy Spirit then indwells me and begins to transform me, and that transformation will last the rest of my life. And the Holy Spirit is wants to transform me, but I have also the old nature, the sin nature, and there's a struggle that Paul describes in Romans, and he's talking about the struggle between your old nature, he calls it the old man, and the, the new nature, the, the Holy Spirit, and, and you're a new man, a new creature, a child of God, because you're born again. There, there's a conflict going on. Now, the Holy Spirit wants us to transform and conform and, 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 and submit and, and, to, and, and surrender and serve and do all these things, but the old man doesn't want to do it, and there's a struggle now. How, how well do we surrender and submit to the promptings of the Holy Spirit? It's an individual thing. Some people embrace the Holy Spirit's uh, transformation efforts. Some people resist it. We all embrace it and resist it to a certain extent. No one completely, well, I don't want to say no one, but very few people, I think, completely submit their will over to the Holy Spirit. To, uh, but the idea is that if someone tells you get saved by making Jesus your Lord, then that's that would be wrong. You can't get saved by making him your Lord. He's your Lord before you get saved. He's your Lord after you get saved. And how well you want to follow and serve him, thats a, that happens after you get saved. And that's an individual process that goes in each one of us. But what I would object to is someone saying, this is how you get saved. You make Jesus your Lord. Now, be, uh, I'm going to ask you guys to respond to that. But first, let me ask uh, Brother... Uh, Stephen, just to say hi and introduce yourself and tell me if you've see, seen it from the beginning so you know what we've done so far. Yeah, hi, I'm Stephen from the United Kingdom. And no, I haven't. I've just come in, I've just joined you, Brother Luke, so I've really just heard what you just said, so I don't know what you've discussed previously. Uh, all right, well, uh, if you look, if you know how to go on your screen here, at the top left, there's a little blue box with white lines across it. If you click on that, you, you'll pop up on your right the comment section, and we have a list of sayings and words that we're discussing. And uh, I, I've discussed already, give your life to Christ, surrender your life, follower of Jesus, ask Jesus into your heart, uh, make Jesus your Lord is the one we're on now. So you can go back and watch the earlier part to get that. I don't want to back up. But that's where we are. We're discussing these terms and seeing uh, how true they are and if they apply in any way at all. But um, I'll give you a chance to respond to what I just said about making Jesus your Lord. And then, then I'll ask Brother Eric to comment. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I can't see that list, Brother Luke, for some reason. But, you know, I've got some technical problems here and it may be due to that. Um, I'll just follow along with uh, what you're what you've been saying, I can't comment on the previous ones because obviously I can't see them. Um, yeah, I agree with you, Brother Luke. He's Lord of our life, uh, but he uh, to have salvation, we need to have a relationship and faith in Him, not because He's Lord. So I agree with you on what you said, basically. All right, thank you, brother, uh, brother Eric. Uh, what you want to comment on that term before we move on? Okay, brother Luke. Uh, while looking at the list, um, it just occurred to me, uh, I don't think any of those are uh, 
the first one, two, three, four, five, I don't think any of those are explicitly stated in the New Testament anywhere at all, uh, are they? No, they're not explicitly stated. Uh, but the concepts can apply to us, but not in the sense that we, we apply it towards a, 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 a receiving salvation or maintaining or proving salvation. These do not factor into in, in that in any way. Uh, however, the idea of wanting to surrender our lives and serve the Lord and submit our lives over, these are all worthwhile things that we want to do, but um, that, that's a, a thing that is part of our growing mature, and maturing in Christ. So that's the important thing. That the, the point I'm making here is that there's a lot of people who seem to um, um, misapply these terms, these concepts, and apply them towards uh, the idea of this is what you got to do in order to get saved, and that's the, that's the mistake I want to correct. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next one, and um, this is the one that you added to the list, brother. Turn from your sins, and um, we know that unless you get one of the strange uh, or new modern translations uh, that use that term, normally. Uh, like in the KJV or something, we, we will not find the term turn from your sins or repent of your sins and, in order to get saved uh, in the Bible. And, and we know that uh, as we study the, the gospel and uh, the message of salvation, that um, uh, our ability to, our, our ability or our commitment or promise to stop sitting and get our sin under control in our life, that has nothing to do with getting saved. Uh, and yet, so some people though, uh, it's very, very common, they believe that um, salvation, I even heard one person, uh, Ray Comfort, who is uh, the leader of that group called uh, The Way of the Master. Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron teach that system. And, 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 and Ray Comfort calls salvation uh, a, a, a two-sided coin. He says on one side is repent of your sins, and he interprets repent of your sins as meaning stop sinning. Give up your promise to stop sinning and, and, and completely stop sinning. That's what uh, he says is the one side of the coin. On the other side is believe on Jesus. So he's added to the gospel instead of the gospel simply meaning believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he's added not only believe, but you've got to first and foremost, you've got to get control of that sin in your life. And so that's the misapplication of this term, repent of your sins, that is commonly used uh, in order, they say it's, that's what you must do to get saved. Uh, all right, so let me ask either one of you to comment on that. Well, I think... Uh sin, I believe that Jesus paid for our sin on the cross and uh, we, you know, we do have sin but it's not sin in this, it's more like a battle of the flesh really than it is of sin. I think God paid for sin once and for all because didn't he say on the cross, it is finished, it is done. And he'd conquered sin and overcome it there and then. So if you have a relationship with Christ, you know, my understanding of it is that uh, you, you find it very difficult to actually sin but your body will still sin and it becomes a battle of wills but your soul and your body as we call it are sealed in Christ that's the way I understand it maybe I'm wrong but that's the way I understand it all right uh, I understand it that way too brother brother Eric what do you say oh absolutely uh, brother Luke and uh, brother Steve I concur uh, very good okay Back to you. Okay, now if if you go over this list of terms, um, maybe maybe uh, somebody will think of another term that's commonly used that we can add to this list and discuss. But these are ones that just came to my mind today that I thought were important to uh, explain. Uh, and now, uh, if, if someone, I'm going to look again at that uh, section see if anybody is watching that added anything to it to tell me uh, I don't see anything there 
Okay. Um, now I'm going to move on, and instead of talking about terms, I'm going to talk about some words that are important to understand and apply correctly. Uh, one is, uh, I made a playlist recently um, um, titled, um, Words Have Meanings. And I, I've, in the past, have made a couple of videos about, uh, uh, one, one, the first one I did was called Believe Defined. I wanted to define the word believe because so many times in the scriptures it says in varying ways it says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and then I have some people that will say well it depends on what you mean by believe <laughs> you know like, uh, believe means more than just believing you know you've got to you know uh, can commit your life to Jesus and this and that and all these things that we've been discussing all these terms and uh, it doesn't mean that at all. Uh, so I made this video titled Believe Defined, and I hope people will go back and watch that video. I do a thorough, a thorough job explaining the. We'll, we'll do it briefly today because I've got numerous words to go over today. Uh, but uh, uh, Brother Bill has also uh, taken on this task of defining certain words like faith, believe. Another word that's misused a lot is repent. Uh, and uh, so Brother Bill's done a good job. I've added some of his videos to that playlist. Uh, uh, words have meanings. But today let, I want to discuss some of these words and, and go over them briefly. And uh, the first word being believe uh, that I'll talk about. Uh, it says, uh, now, I would say that there's a... There's a large group of people. I talked about how many people identify themselves as Christians of some kind. There's 2.2 billion in the world. I eliminated 1.2 of them right off the bat. These are the Roman Catholic cultists. If you think I'm being harsh calling it a cult, then go to my playlist, Roman Catholicism Debunked, and I have about 10 hours of teaching on, on their errors and the, the problems with it and why it's a, it is a, the largest cult in the world. So go to that if you think I'm being you know, unfair to them. But this 1.2 billion Roman Catholics, uh, they believe the gospel. Now, the gospel, as, as the, the closest thing in the Bible that we see that actually says this is the gospel, is, is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. And, and, and Paul says um, that Christ died for our sins. He was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. And that's the gospel. That word gospel is a Greek word that means good news. And so if you ask any Roman Catholic, do you believe Jesus died on a cross for our sins, he was buried, and he rose from the dead the third day. Universally, all Roman Catholics, 102, 100, I mean 1.2 billion around the world will say, oh, yes, that's true, of course I believe that. And yet I say they're not saved, even though they believe the gospel. They believe the historical facts that this happened. And the reason I say they're not saved is because even though they believe the facts, they don't believe that's what saves them. It because if you follow up and ask a Roman Catholic, do you think you're going to go to heaven, and if so, why? The Roman Catholic standard answer is, well, I think I'm going to heaven, or I hope I'm going to heaven. I'm trying. I'm, I, and the, the reason is because I did get water baptized. I did go to confession and communion. I do attend church regularly, and I do this, and I do that, and I'm hoping that it's, I hope it's good enough, and, and uh, God will approve of me. See, the Roman Catholics believe that salvation is based upon personal merit. They believe in Jesus, they believe the gospel, but they also nullify it all. They cancel it out by saying the way you get to heaven though is through personal merit. So when we say believe, um, uh, believing the gospel, um, I, I, 
what I want a person to understand is that that is that is what saves us. Believing that you got to believe that you get saved because you believe Jesus paid for your sins and He raised Himself from the dead and He promises eternal life to you because you believe that. Not and and forget that your personal merit factors in at all. If a person understands the gospel and believes it in that way, then they would be saved. Now, I've got more to say about this, but I don't want to monopolize it, so go ahead and, and expound on that, either one of you. Go ahead, Steve. You go first. I'm sorry, we've got a, it's a little bit slow for me to uh, un, unclick the mic, so I do apologize for the slowness there. First of all, it's really great to be here, and thank you for the invite, Brother Luke. And that young man, I'm sorry I didn't quite catch your name, Eric, I believe, but thank you very much, and God bless you. Um, believe. I think believe is not just a case of believing in something. I think it's about putting your trust in it, in the Word as well. For me, John 3.16 says it all. For God sent his only son into the world. It says, I, I'm not, I don't know the exact words, I'm sure Brother Luke knows them, I've only just got in. Um, but it isn't about believing just that, it's in trusting and having this faith. I think these words, faith and trust and believe, they, they all sort of interconnect. You have to have this understanding that God is telling you the truth and believing that that is the truth and that is the way. And I think there's another thing in John that says, I am the way. You know, that I am the truth and the light and the only way. So you have to believe that Jesus Christ came, he did all this for you, and it's the only way to get saved. And I think where the, as far as the Roman Catholics are concerned, they lose, I think I agree with you, Brother Luke, they lose it. They, they lose their focus. They, they start worshipping like the Apostles and Mary and, and, and other bits that they do. And I don't know why they do that. You know, I, it's probably hundreds of years of tradition, but it's not what is taught in the gospel because it says there's only one way that we can get into heaven, and that is to believe and to trust and to have faith in Jesus Christ. So for me, these three words, belief, trust, and faith, sort of all, it sort of intertwines with your belief or your faith in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Over to you, brother. Yeah, I would say well said. I agree with everything you said. I'll ask Brother Eric to expound on it before I move on. Uh, very good, Steve. Uh, yes, absolutely. I agree 100%. Uh, the simplicity of the gospel is to believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins according to scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to scriptures and uh, and once you believe that you will win the battle for your soul okay back to you okay um, now when we see the word believe in the gospel of John it, it appears in some form or another 99 times the Apostle Paul uh, is famous for saying it in Acts 16.31. He says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And we see this really, I see it uh, in two forms. It says, Believe in Jesus, or believe in uh, John 3.16. Uh, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we have the idea of believing in Jesus, and we have Paul expressing it, whosoever believeth on the Lord shall be saved. And I think that they both have a, 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 a nuance. They're saying the same thing, but let me express, try to elaborate on why I think that it's so helpful to think in terms of believing in him and believing on him. Now. Um, Brother Stephen lives in England, and I live in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Now, if 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 I told Brother Stephen, Brother Stephen, I am in a desperate situation. I have to get to England, and I have no way of getting there. I'm just if I don't get there, I'm going to die. 
And that's how serious my situation is. And I and sharing that with you, say, well, Brother Luke, just I, I will come from England. I will fly over there, get pick you up, help you, and get you an airplane, fly you back in an airplane, and I'll pay for everything. You don't have to do anything. Just trust me. I will do it for you. And, and uh, I, if, if I believe that he is able to do it, I believe in Stephen's ability to do it. I believe he has the means to do it. He can do it. And now I believe in his faithfulness. He promised he's going to come and get me and get me back to England. And I believe he, he, he will keep his promise. And that's the same way that I see uh, believing in Jesus for salvation. We believe in his ability. I don't believe Muhammad has the ability to save me. I don't believe Buddha has the ability to save me or the Pope or the Virgin Mary. I don't believe in my own ability to get to heaven. I believe in that Jesus has the ability. He's the only one that has the ability to take me to heaven. That's what he claimed, and I believe it. Now, he also promised that he would do it if I would trust him. So, uh, I've got two things. One, I believe he's able, and two, I have confidence in him, I trust him, I believe he will keep his promise, and he's faithful. So I believe in his ability to save me, and I believe in his faithfulness to save me. And that would be uh, how I would see the idea of believing in Jesus for salvation. And then, then the concept of believing on, we can use some of these other words that apply to this, that Brother Stephen said there are certain words that, that help us understand believing uh, uh, better. And uh, I think he used the word the trust. Well, I trust that Stephen will come to Vegas and get me and take me there. I'm trusting him. Okay? Uh, but another uh, word is I'm depending on, on him to do it. I don't have any other way of, of getting to England. I'm depending on Stephen to get me there. He promised me I'm depending on him. So that's believing on him. I believe on Jesus. I'm depending on him. Another word is rely. I'm relying on Jesus. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm totally given up on any other way of getting there. I've given up on my own efforts to succeed, and I am relying on him. And I have confidence in him. So, to me, the, these are the ways of the we proper way of understanding what faith and believing in Jesus for salvation is, and these are some of the words that can help us uh, that are associated with this. Uh, let me see if there's any other words I want to apply to this. Um, trust, confidence, faith, gospel. Okay, so those are the words I think that will help a person better understand, but words that are definitely not associated with uh, believing in Jesus for salvation or faith in Jesus is um, surrender, commit, serve, uh, pick up your cross and follow him. These words are not, asso not, not associated at all with the concept of believing and trusting. They're, they're, that's a totally different concept. Those things can apply after we get saved and we say, well, I really want to serve him now. I want to, I want to just... I'm going to give up the things I used to, 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 to do. My career is not even important to me, or I'm changing my career. I'm going to become a missionary. I want to give my life over to service to him. Well, that's a worthwhile thing to do, but that has nothing to do with getting saved. Okay, uh, brothers, your comments on that? Yeah, I think that's a very good point. I mean, um, the words that you used there are really, really good, like... Uh, you know, de depending and, you know, um, and uh, the ability for Jesus to do things are really good words. This is why I think believe is such a big encompassing word, which encompasses a lot of other words in in that that we would say, um, I would use to describe my understanding of God and my relationship with him as I see him as I would 
my father or my a member of my family that I you talk about me coming over to America to to get you and you believing in depending and relying on me because relying is another word that I would use ties up with belief. Um, we come to rely on Jesus Christ, you know, because he's like my father, like my I can't put him in earthly terms, but he's like my best friend, and I I can talk to him and I have a proper relationship with him, and and to have that relationship. I have to have an understanding of these words and and uh, and when you have a friendship and relationship with someone like you describe that you trust and solely to deliver you out of a, a bad situation you have understanding and commitment and you have that support because you know that he's there all the time even though you may not always feel him but you know he's there so you have this knowledge that he gives you that he's always present and correct. So I think all these words tie up with with belief is what I think. Um, I'll just uh, let Brother Eric have a little say on that and see what he has to say. Uh, yes, uh, Steve, Brother Steve, I agree. And uh, Brother Luke, uh, I love how you uh, expressed uh, that... Uh, point about uh, believing on and believing in uh, Jesus. Okay, back to you. Okay. All right, then. Um, let me see. I think I have a few more words here that I want to explain. Um, now, I mentioned the word gospel, and first of all, uh, I, I have a couple of playlists that I would recommend to people that, um, to relate to the concept of gospel or gospels. And uh, one is uh, dispensationalism. And um, I, I'm not a dispensationalist, as, as you get from, uh, uh, you know, the, as taught, taught today by, by this very popular way of seeing things that there's a period of time throughout history where God dealt with men a certain way and then he changed and he dealt with men differently and then differently and and some people believe there's many as seven or more dispensations and the deal that God has with man is different in each one. Um, I used to believe in that because that's all I knew but as I studied further I, I left that line of thinking and I, I believe that there's really only two things. We talk about rightly dividing the word of, of truth um, that is in the King James Bible, but in other translations it says rightly handle it. Uh, uh, handle the scriptures correctly. Uh, uh, understand it correctly. Brother Joe Byron said, as, as he watched my teaching in this, he said, Brother Luke, you're, we, we should say rightly unite the scriptures. See, the, the scriptures here, this is two testaments, Old Testament and New Testament. And there's 39 books in the old and 27 books in the new. And yet, it's all telling us the same thing throughout there as far as man's, man's fall and, and the redemption of man that would, would come through the Savior Jesus. And uh, throughout the whole Old and New Testament, it's, it's either t t t saying it's going to happen or later on after the cross, it has happened. It's done. So the only real dividing point that I claim in the scriptures is the cross. And in the book of Hebrews, it actually declares that. It says uh, the, the, the testament begins at the death of the testator. Now, if you have a will, a lot of times people call it your last will in testament. And that's what, that's what it actually what it was. That was happened at the cross. Jesus died. And in his last testament is, I died for your sins, it's finished. And, and so you got, the, the point was be everything before the cross was pointing to this future event. And then since the cross, everything was written, but written about it. And as we look back, we say, it's finished. He did it for us. Let's believe in him. Uh, so what I, when I look at uh, dispensations, I see it only in these two, that's the only dividing point. Uh, but... The, the word gospel, as, as the hyper-dispensationalist, the Paul-onlyists teach it, and the, uh, the, the regular 
dispensationalists teach it, is that they think that man got saved differently in the past, and and now we're at this time in history we get saved by believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and and it's and it's grace, and after the rapture that there'll be a period of time and the tribulation, the millennium, where man has to get saved differently again. There's a new system that comes into play, and they call it the gospel of the kingdom. They, 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 but to me, there's one gospel, and the the word gospel is um, just a Greek word that means good news. And we oftentimes we we say that the gospel is in only in one verse in the Bible, First Corinthians 15. Three and four. That's two verses. But uh, the the gospel is broader than that. That tells you what transpired so that you can so that you can receive salvation. But the gospel is the is, is that's is, is that's the announcement. The First Corinthians fifteen three and four is the declaration. Look what's happened. He died for our sins. He was buried. He rose. He raised himself from the dead. The third day. That's the announcement that now I've got good news for you. Because of that, you can go to heaven if you trust him. So the gospel is the good news. I would say the gospel is encompassed in Romans 6.23, where it says, The wages of sin is death, but the the, uh, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the gospel. It's saying it's saying you're going you're going to die, go to hell because of your sin. But the good news is that there's a gift God has for you, eternal life through faith in Jesus. Now that's really good good news. That's the greatest news ever. So to me. When we use the word gospel, we're talking about words and how they, you know, what they, how to really understand words correctly. Is that uh, the gospel? Uh, people will say, well, a person can't get saved from uh, John 3:16. Person can't get saved from all these different other books or all these different verses only from this one particular verse in 1 Corinthians. That's the only way people can get saved. But I say, no, people get to say from reading the Gospel of John. It specifically says in the in the book of John, it, it says, and near the end it says, I'm writing these things because I want you to know how to get saved. That's the whole purpose of the, this book. That's what John said. It's the only book that declares the whole purpose of the book is to tell us how to get saved. So how could a hyper dispensationist turn around and say, you can't get saved by reading the Gospel of John? It's a different gospel. It's just that's for Jews. Uh, so there is a lot of craziness. But to me, what I'm, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that the word gospel means good news. And, and the good news is that we get to go to heaven as a free gift through faith in Jesus Christ. We don't have to go to hell. That's the good news. Brothers? Well, uh, I'm not too sure because I'm not an expert on the gospel. I know the gospel was uh, what they think they used to call the synoptic gospel, which is the four first books of the New Testament, Mark, Matthew, Luke and John. Um, and I agree with you though, brother. I mean, um, you know, we can get saved by anything that God chooses to use out of the Bible. It doesn't have to be one particular part of the Bible. If that's a relevant part that means something to you, then that's the bit that God will use. So I don't think it's one particular uh, passage of the Bible because salvation isn't just about uh, understanding your Bible because lots of people when they get saved never read their Bible and, and don't even know what the Bible is until after they get saved. So I don't really think I've got much to say because I don't consider myself um, very knowledgeable on this, so I'd be interested to see what others have to say on this subject. So I'd like to learn more. All right, let me let me say one thing here before we go on to Eric. Here, uh, I mentioned this yesterday in a study, and that is that there are two things written in the Bible. You have scripture, and you have titles, subtitles, footnotes. And, and what you cited was, I think you said the gospels, the synoptic gospels. The term synoptic gospels 
is not in the scripture. That's that's a term that was a, a man came up with to try to teach something. Even the word gospel, there there is no title for the book. Like for example, you look where it says the gospel according to Saint Matthew. Uh, then it says the gospel according to. Let me see. See if it identifies it the same way. Mark. Yeah, I didn't mean any arm, Brother Luke. Yeah. Sorry. So see here also in Mark it says the gospel according to Saint Mark. That that's an insertion. That was not written as part of scripture, the word gospel there. It's a title. They call it gospel. Uh, and a lot of people think they uh, use the word gospel interchangeable with the word truth. Well, that's the gospel truth, you know. Uh, but the word gospel, when we talk about salvation, what I'm saying is, is not limited to a particular verse. It is a concept that this is good news that you can go to heaven if you have believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior. And so, um, when we talk about the four Gospels, um, the, these are just the, 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 the accounts, four different accounts of, of, of what transpired by four different writers. Um, and you can call them Gospels in the sense they're all stories about, it, about good news. But they're not Gospels in terms of... of uh, there's four different ways to get heaven or four different, you know, they're just, it's, in other words, the point I'm trying to make is that the term gospel in the title, it was put there by man. It's not part of the actual scripture writing itself. Okay, uh, Brother Eric? Uh, absolutely, Brother Luke and Brother Steve. Now, I've come to uh, find out, and I want to have my lawyers uh, confirm this for me, that uh, the items contained in the Ark of the Old Covenant, Aaron's rod that budded, the two stone tablets, and the uh, container of manna were merely a shadow of the new Ark of the Covenant, which is the cross, the, the tomb, and the resurrection. And those things in the old covenant ark of the covenant uh, are a picture of uh, the new covenant ark of the covenant uh, what do you say about that well I, I have a playlist I did uh, a couple of years ago titled the bloody trail and uh, in, in that playlist uh, I have these hangouts like that we're doing now and we spent probably at least 10 or 12 hours or more going from Genesis through Revelation and pointing out all the examples, like the one you just cited there, that are what we call pictures and shadows or foreshadowing of this future event, this Jesus' death on the cross for our sins. And so for a real thorough understanding of all these things in the Old Testament that... Uh, point to what would happen in the future. Um, watch that playlist, The Bloody Trail. Uh, there are a few more words and, uh, that I want to discuss, but I think I'll save those for next time. I got uh, the words, um, uh, the name of Jesus. I want to talk about the significance of the, the name of Jesus, the, ter the word propitiation, the word atonement, the word sanctification. Uh, if we think of more words, uh, brothers, if you think of some words that you think we would be worthwhile for us to discuss and define as we have done earlier uh, today, then um, we'll add them to the list and do more next uh, time, which would be, uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, but I, I'm trying to keep these broadcasts now that I'm doing them daily, just about an hour long. So I'm going to end the broadcast here. I'll ask each of you to kind of make any summary, uh, summation remarks, uh, and then we'll make a, a quick uh, uh, invitation for salvation. Uh, go, go ahead. Okay, Brother Luke. Uh, uh, 
it's very important to understand properly uh, the good news of Jesus Christ, uh, the simplicity of it, and uh, the truth of it. And uh, it's no secret uh, in scriptures uh, what we're commanded to do by God. Uh, for lost mankind, they're commanded to believe on Jesus Christ. And once we're uh, born again, we're commanded to love one another. Okay, back to you, Brother Luke. Hmm. All right. Uh, uh, does Brother Stephen want to say anything final before before we uh, end up? No, you're okay. I think uh, Brother Eric covered it all. Bless him. Okay. Uh, now, I would say that you know, I always like to end every broadcast and spend five or ten minutes presenting the the message of salvation and inviting people to put their faith in Jesus. There's no reason to explain it further. This entire hour was talking about uh, the idea of what, what, what it means to really get saved, what we need to do, and some of the fallacies that, that, that people have that are, are very common today. So there's no reason to do that. If you watch this video, you know what you need to do. Uh, don't put any faith in yourself or your religion or anything like that. Just put all your faith in Jesus. Believe in him for salvation, and he'll give it to you. It's a free gift. So I hope you'll do it right now. And once you receive the gift, it's irrevocable. You never have to worry about losing it, no matter what you do. So uh, uh, thank you for watching this. Uh, brothers, I'll talk to you privately after I close the live broadcast. But uh, I hope you'll all join me uh, daily now, uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time for these live broadcasts. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.